Hello and welcome to another edition of our short clip video series. My name is Ole Carstensen and in the following video I'll demonstrate the calculation of thermal expansion coefficients from ReXFF simulations. Before we begin, let me point out that this video is the latest addition to a video series on predicting polymer properties such as Young's modulus or the glass transition temperature. So if you'd like to find out more, you can find the complete playlist on our YouTube channel. I put a link into the video description. Thermal expansion is the tendency of a material to change its volume or shape in response to a temperature change. The thermal expansion can be characterized by a general thermal expansion coefficient defined as follows. This thermal expansion coefficient can naively be computed from the temperature dependence of the strain during an annealing simulation. So all we have to do is to slowly anneal or cool down an atomistic polymer structure and sample the volume change along the way. The setup of the calculation is very similar to the one of the glass transition temperature. We will employ the same polymer structure but a slightly different temperature program this time. We begin by opening up a new AMPS input window and importing the coordinates of the polymer structure. I go to File, Import Coordinates and select the structure that I have downloaded from the online tutorial. As usual, the links are in the video description. Okay. Then we switch to the ReXFF engine. There you go. And set up an annealing program. The data points will be sampled within the temperature range of 300 to 340 K. However, before the actual sampling, I will carry out a short simulated annealing sequence. I find this step produces less noisy results in the end. I guess if the sampling intervals are chosen long enough, the simulated annealing can also be left out. Okay, so next we are going to pick the force field and we are going for the force field CHON underscore weak again, just like in the other videos. And then we are defining the settings of the molecular dynamics calculation. Just click on the arrow right next to the task molecular dynamics and request a total of 650,000 steps and a sample frequency of 2000. Next, we are setting up a barostat to atmospheric pressure and we are selecting the Behrensen barostat and a pressure of one atmosphere with a damping constant of 500 femtoseconds. To set up the thermostat settings, we are going back into the MD main options panel and enter the thermostat settings. We click on the plus button to generate a thermostat and request a simple Behrensen thermostat. We begin the temperature program with a quick annealing run from 298.15 up to 600k and then down to 350k. The heating up period is going to take 100,000 steps and the cool down period is going to last 200 thousand steps. The damping constants will be 100 femtoseconds. Now from 350k down to 300k we want to employ a more fine-grained cooling down procedure that allows us to sample the volume of the system along the way and for this we are going to jump into the online tutorial and just copy temperature entries into the temperature field of the thermostat and then we do the same 
for the duration values. Now all that is left to do is to save and run the calculation. I call it a CTE and, and run. Uh, on a normal desktop computer this calculation will run for a long time, typically uh, several days, maybe one to two days, depends a bit on the hardware. Uh, but on a cluster uh, in parallel this calculation can be done within half a day or so. To extract the strain versus temperature profiles we make use of a Python script. A link to the step-by-step -step online tutorial and the Python script are found in the video description. Once the calculation is finished we can open up the command line from the help menu of the AMP SCUI. When the command line opens we type in bash and when the last job was open inside AMSCUI, then we should already be in the correct directory, which is the case here. Now to find the command that executes the Python script, we are going to take a look into the online tutorial, where we can find the command. We copy the command and paste it into the command line. Now we need to make sure that this variable results dir is pointing to the correct results directory. In our case this is true, in your case you might need to rename it depending on how you have named your job initially and then we can just hit enter and have obtained our results. The strain can be plotted with any graph plotting software like for example GNUplot or some spreadsheet software. Here I imported the values into OpenOffice Calc and then plotted column 5 which contains the volume against column 1 which contains the temperatures. To determine the slope I now run a regression analysis. With the slope and the volume of the first data point termed V0 here I can now calculate the thermal expansion coefficient alpha 0 as follows. The simulated expansion coefficient is in the correct order of magnitude, but it's underestimating the experimental coefficient. This result is well in line with the findings of the original publication. With this final result our video comes to an end. I hope you liked what you saw and if you did take a look at our YouTube channel or leave a comment below the video.